Good afternoon, and thank you for attending for the attention you've given us far. So we'll go ahead and won't take too much time with the introduction. Let's get into this trend day. So I'll kind of dovetail and piggyback on what Serge was talking about with respect to the trend and the swing trading intraday tactics. So I hope you attended that session. That was a good presentation. And so I'll take some of the concepts and really focus on the trend, focus on breakout methods and retracement methods. So that'll be the core focus that we'll talk about today, but just like anything in technical analysis, it will apply to the intraday frame, to the swing trading frame, and even to an extent the investor or long-term frame. And trends, if you are a new trader, uh, trends are really the first place to start. You typically want to follow a trend, but so many things, so many strategies and methods, uh, and even logic, have us going against a trend but that doesn't always help us. So we want to call those tops and bottoms and market reversals, and those things are a lot of fun. But in terms of trading strategies, as Serge was mentioning earlier, simple, simple, simple process, method, strategy, things that we can repeat, things that we can do consistently. So we pick our time frame, depending on how much time we can devote to the market and what our markets are, methods, strategies, and the run. Uh, so We'll go ahead and jump into the presentation. So all trading does involve risk. I wish that it didn't, but I wish there was a little indicator or strategy or method to make us money all the time, but it's not the way that typically works. So we have to have our method strategies and realize that we're trading in probabilities, not certainties. And as Reed mentioned, and I'll kind of go quickly on this one, um, I started my career as an investor, typical just you know Warren Buffett style, pick the good stocks with my father in late 1990s when the market was surging. When the market fell, 2000, 2001, that's when I realized technical analysis or charting or indicators, things that you can put on top of your fundamental analysis. You do have to have that bigger picture. It's not enough just to be a technical trader unless you are an intraday trader, which that's fine, but on an investor style, swing style, profit, portfolio or those sort of metrics, we should take the bigger picture into concept. So that's what I did. It was a swing trader integrated fundamentals, which is your earnings and company strength, and technical analysis, which is when to buy. So they work hand in glove. So fundamental analysis gives you that when or what do I do, which stocks are good, which stocks are bad, when am I a buyer, when am I cautious, when do I hedge. And the technical analysis for me gave me the when do I enter, where do I place my stops, and how long do I hold this position, this trade, at what point do I exit, essentially. And that led to me getting a CMT, a Charter Market Technician, in the 2009, the two-year program, which basically means I studied a PhD level, like a master's level technical analysis. But even then, as I still traded my account here, it's simplicity, simple things are what matter, not the complexity. And I started the Afraid to Trade website in 07. And as Reed mentioned, this is kind of the coolest thing for me. Uh, moved to Los Angeles last year from Alabama, North Alabama. So I have the little southern accent, southern charm, and kind of a big city on the west coast here. So I'm liking that a lot. I, I wrote the Complete Trading Course, which is a way to put my strategies into a more formal kind of a method of delivery. And also the Afraid to Trade blog. And that's a blog we keep up every single day. And it's just education, a little bit of predicting and forecasting, and a little bit of psychology, so a little bit of everything there. All right, so in speaking of a trend day and trend analysis and trend metrics, we're going to take a look at what a trend day is for the outline. We'll look at early detection. So that's the key thing about it, is not just understanding and seeing it happen in real time, but actually taking advantage of it. So those who can detect, look for the signals, look for the clues, will be market detectives, market sleuths, put our detective hat on, and look for objective and key things that precede big market moves, whether on a swing trading basis or, for me, I'm more of an intraday trader, short-term trader. So that's what I look for as intraday tactics. But these things still apply. These breakouts, these retracements into trending things, if you can detect them as early as possible, that puts you ahead of the market and puts you into this better chance to make profit and manage risk appropriately. We'll monitor because a trend day that starts off as a trend day doesn't mean it will end as a trend day. A trend that continues does not mean it will end the day or end the swing or the month or the week or the year to the upside. So we have to monitor, which means kicking bias to the curb and watching price, watching our 
moving averages, watching trend lines, et cetera, and not saying, well, this is the best stock in the world, it's got the best chart pattern, and so-and-so said it's the best stock, and therefore, I'm long if the stock starts falling. That doesn't typically work. And we'll focus our attention at the end on retracements and on breakouts. So common questions that traders have about trend days is, you know, why do I lose money, or trends in general, trying to call that top or bottom or play the reversal? Why do I lose money? when I'm fighting something that, in hindsight at least, seems so easy. That can be the most frustrating thing a lot of times, is seeing something happen, fight it at the end of the day, end of the week, end of the month. My goodness, why didn't I just do that? Why didn't I buy Apple at that spot or Google or whatever? And why do the indicators, especially these more complex indicators, have you fighting a trend day in terms of divergences or reversal candles or going outside the Bollinger Band? which all those things tell you to fight and fade a market movement. That is common. That's something we have to avoid, but uh, new traders don't do that. They follow the indicators, and it tends to hurt them on trend days and on trending environments because the price continues. And the logic is that price can't go any higher after such a large opening gap. Can it? Uh, yeah, certainly it can. And these are examples of a huge opening gap. We had a couple of these things happen this last week. And we'll see that example and we'll talk about those. Yeah, they certainly can. It's a momentum impulse. It's supply-demand imbalance. And so things that move, things that gap can keep going. Oil, for example, gapped and traded much lower under the 90 per barrel level. That traded a couple days lower. So we'll, we'll set these up, discuss these, and really kind of move forward uh, a, a strategy method for profiting from these rare but very, very efficient movements. So to define a trend day, to actually set it up and say, what is this thing? It's going to be a market or in a session that opens at one extreme, gaps up above a, uh, gaps up above a resistance level, so to speak, and then closes up the other. Typically does begin with a large gap. That's your key focus. If you see a gap in a stock, especially breaking above resistance, that's a segment that you can go ahead and purchase or buy or join that trend. So we'll look at the this, this specific methods about how to do that and on a swing and intraday basis for that strategy, which seems to defy logic, but let's kind of talk about why these things happen and why they're very important. The market will, throughout the session, or throughout the chart, bounce off rising moving averages. We'll define those. And we'll also see higher than average volume. Very, very critical to look at volume which measures participation or interest or enthusiasm or to the extent the side in which the bears or short sellers are getting their stops hit and they're having to stop out. Or in a downtrend day, how the buyers are having to liquidate. So volume will give us clues about how those happen. Let's talk about what this concept of feedback loops. So a feedback loop is just simply a really just a, a, something that moves the market that continuously moves. So for example, a breakout of our resistance will bring in new buyers. Maybe they'll go on Twitter, they'll talk about it, maybe the news is mentioning something, and it actually creates buying. A market pushing up to new highs, a brand new 52-week high, actually does create buying pressure. And it forces, when that same thing happens, forces bears or short sellers to exit because they're losing money and they're taking their stop losses. So that actually creates further upside price action. So that's the core of a trend day and a trend movement on higher frames, which is that both sides are doing the exact same thing for very different reasons. Bulls are excited, they're euphoric, they're very, very happy, and they're doing so to make money, putting on positions on a breakout to make money. Bears, on the other hand, they're taking their stop losses or holding, praying, and wishing that the market goes back under that resistance level. And that therein lies the power and the movement of trend days. To be technical, it's a big, big, big supply-demand imbalance. And it's inefficient. It's powerful. It's moving. There are lots and lots of large, if you do candles, large candles or large bars, large range bars, lots of volume, activity, price moves really quickly, and it's sort of, to an extent, scary to new traders. And we just think, well, it's going to end. The move is over. 
but, but it's not. And so this is the key focus of what drives a trend and how we profit from it, how it's efficient. And the price will depart from value, value being a range. If you've traded for any number of you know, days or weeks or months here, we know that price tends to range or trade sideways and then break into these impulse of trend movements and then trade sideways again. So we would call those value areas or consolidations. When price breaks out of that, it's like sort of a, a, a spring being loosed or a, a momentum burst or impulse. And so that tends to create movement. So just kind of keeping this slide in mind, those who fight a trend day actually continue or contribute to it continuing with their stop losses. So that's sort of the hidden secret of the market is that trends continue because one side's winning, the other side is losing. When you have price movement that is efficient or range or trading in within boundaries, that means neither side is winning. They're e essentially equally matched in supply demand, buy, sell pressure. A trend means they're not. And one side is dominating the other side. So let's start with a number one rule of detection. Assume that today will not be a trend day, not be a trend day, or that the trend will stay sideways and nothing will happen. Just you know, being a, a detective here, assume the null hypothesis that nothing will happen. The market must prove to you. It must do certain things that you can quantify and make into a checklist that it has actually broken into a trend, a breakout movement. You'll do that by make, making note of unusual or strange or quantifiable metrics and activity at certain points of the day, certain points in the month, certain points on the chart. That's something we'll definitely look at. Volume, momentum, range, etc. And even if the market shows a trend initially, you must monitor it throughout the session and keep that in mind. The trends can continue, but there are certain things called rounded reversals where a trend will actually fail. That's kind of a rare example, at least in intraday metrics, but we'll take a look at what exactly sets up those potential failures. Again, game plan is to set these up in advance. The plan is to recognize these as early as possible. So here, if, so this, is a, this is your sort of money slide here. This is your checklist, or the key thing you can use immediately to begin quantifying and developing how you recognize these trend days. And it's just temporal. So we'll start when you wake up. The first thing you do if you're trading, if you have a full-time job, you'll wake up and maybe put trades on in the morning before you go to work or whatever the case may be. So that's what we'll do. We'll wake up and we'll look at anything that's happened out of the ordinary in the Asian, European markets, if there's any gaps, those sort of things. A range or narrow or nothing, which is a neutral day, neutral event, tends to occur when there's nothing out of the ordinary overseas. A trend day if something really big has happened. Pre-market news, maybe the first hour or the hour before the market actually opens here in New York, it would be no news, not a Fed day, not a jobs report day, nothing really big earnings in terms of like Apple or Google or really big stocks. Nothing really is on the docket for the news day that favors not a trend day. If there is something big, like a jobs report or if you trade oil, the Wednesday report of inventories or each market has its own certain little things that move them. So that would be your big report that would favor a possible trend event. And if you do, or if you are trading the opening session, look at the gap. If there is a really not so much gap whatsoever, no gap or a gap that is instantly filled, not really going to be a trend day more than not. If there is a really big gap, therein lies the kicker. Most trend days begin with big gap activity. So we'll focus our attention on that. And that's, it's, you know, whatever the market is, oil or gold or individual stocks, ETFs, or the market itself. If there's a big gap, that means something different's going on. Something's happened. And that calls our attention. We don't want to fade or try to play against really big gaps. And of course, that word big is relative to the market volatility. So within the first hour, nothing unusual, same thing. Not really a big volume spike, not really a big momentum spike, no gap, no breakout, nothing strange. That would favor not a trend day versus something out of the ordinary, which includes high market internals. If you look at breadth, extremes, 
volume would spike above average. You can quantify that lots and lots of methods. I'm just say the last 10 days. Volatility, which is your range bars, and that's nothing more than a candle or just the, the height of the bar, that will be higher than normal. Any type of breakout, we'll see the chart shortly, but these things are unusual, and you can detect them all really within the first hour of the market opening. So you have four different metrics, four different things to quantify and look at and study as the markets open, as you prepare your trading session or as you go to work or you're doing the trades of the day. These things would be what you would focus on. If you are an intraday trader, then this is what, or swing trader for that matter too, you would take a metric, take, a, sort of take the market's temperature or check the market up at the midday. If you can see boundaries, same thing, it's probably a range day. Otherwise, trend. So this makes much more sense. Serge was talking earlier, this makes a lot more sense. If you see it, let's actually take a look at that. So, and we'll go back to the chart shortly. But trend days, just bigger picture, these are swing trading metrics here. Trend days may often develop from range breakouts, markets that open at one extreme go to the other, and you can have series of trends, trend days in a row, especially for swing traders, this is most important to note this concept. So range breakouts are important. Trend days, this is a big one, trend days can develop from traps. Traps. That's when a market initially has a support level, trades under it, it's that rinse, wash, why did they do that again? Ah, it brings people and gets them short and then jumps them out. Essentially, it short squeezes them and they have to cover their losing positions. That's the bearish trap at that point. So trend days can develop from traps. Very, very big uh, point to know. This is just examples from 2013, and there's more even recently we'll see in the next chart, but these little traps can trigger not just a single event, but multiple trend days. That's what this is. So this is our most recent chart about these little initial movements down, little initial movement down, breakouts, etc. You actually get series or multiple trend days in a row. Intraday traders, critical to know this, swing traders, this would be what you're looking for to put positions on, and essentially on the return back. So not necessarily shorting the, the down move, but entering on the reversal back into this trap zone. So once the market, uh, in this example, it should have pulled back, but markets don't usually go multiple days in a row, but when they do, or down in that case, it starts to break support levels, and it does these trend day events. So keep these in mind. Multiple trend days, three or four or five in a row, can occur, and they often occur from trap scenarios. So just because two days in a row were trend days doesn't mean the third won't be a trend day. And I highlighted these examples, uh, a couple of them actually, from uh, really mid-2014, uh, mid one, two, three, four up days in a row, little reversal candle down. Okay, yeah, market should go down from that. Wrong, the market went ahead, broke above, and kept those trend days going. So keep that in mind, same logic. We, we're used to, we're conditioned to have the market pull back and retrace and you know, do these little retracement things, but instead of doing these big moves, when they do, they trap traders. That's another type of trap. Traps aren't just when markets push under and rally back up. They're if they go three, four, five days in a row, stall on the sixth day, and then keep going up. Crude oil did that recently. Gold has done that as well. Treasuries uh, as well. We've seen lots of volatile feedback loops, mar markets moving in the same direction multiple days. So that is another type of trap. It's three, four, five in a row. This looks like a sell candle. It's going to go down after this, but oh, just kidding. And so these will trigger additional trend days. Again, if you're a swing trader, this is what you will be looking for, these traps and the re-entry of price from a trap, and then that can trigger your movement. So the basic strategies would be buying retracements of these moving averages. In this case, I like to use a 20 EMA. And just for reference, I'm not seeing the chat box, so that's why I'm kind of going through. I'm, seeing, I'm not seeing the questions come in on the chat, so usually I like to have the interaction, but chats, I'm not seeing the, the box move in the chat, so that's just interesting point. So maybe even take a look at that, but that's why I like to communicate. But I'm missing that, fu that function here. But on the trend day basis strategies, going back to the, this point, the strategies would be buying flags. A flag is a retracement style pattern. 
So that would be a classic textbook retracement event. That's my favorite type of trade. And Reed was talking in the intro of the presentation about our favorite type of trades, things that have made it successful. The, really the core of my trading activity would be these pro-trend flag events, pro-trend retracement trades. They're pullbacks and instead of buying breakouts, breakouts occur, but I'm more of a pullback trader and this is what that would be. So the pullbacks is a whole metric to bull flags. We'll see there's plenty of those. Or if you're a little bit more aggressive, you can do breakouts, breakouts. For those that knew me, we call these pop stops, short squeezes. It's a market breaking out. That's their trap scenario. A lot of traders get short. The market comes right back into that resistance line, breaks or support line, breaks back above it after generating a sell signal. Boom! It's just like a almost like a hot knife through butter. It creates multiple trend days in a row to the upside. It's popped stops, short squeeze, and again, it all goes back to supply demand differential. Bulls are dominant. Bears are losing the battle. Think of price like that, especially if you're new. It is a supply-demand difference that moves price, not indicators and uh, you know, not things like that. It's, it's supply-demand differential. Usually one side's winning, other side's losing. For our exit, we'll exit on the break of a trend line or a reversal candle if we use those. We'll place and trail, be active with our stop management under that 20 EMA, we'll see that shortly, or 50 if you're more aggressive. And this is kind of the key thing. We'll ignore everything and trade with the trend unless reversal signals trigger, which that's going to be our reversal metric. So going ahead to what we'll talk about for the rest of PE here, the trend lines, just draw those by your hand, nothing special about that. That draws the flag. That's going to be your entry trigger, will also be your exit metric, and how you manage the position. These are just hand-drawn, simple, Trend lines, the easiest thing, we can always build on top of that, but that's your easiest thing to do, and trust me, that does typically work more than complex strategies. I like to use the 20 and 50 exponential averages, and that's just a short-term connected average, and a little bit more intermediate, so you're getting two different points of view. 20 is more short-term, you can typically take trades off of that, and 50 is how you would manage and determine if the trend day is likely to fail. So for me, it's 20 and 50. Same goes for daily charts, for that matter, too, on the swing frame. The same logic applies, just a higher time frame. Volume or internals, those would be the key focal points for what we're using. If you're ambitious, you can use Bollinger Bands or Fibonacci. Fibonacci, in terms of buying the pullbacks, places to get support or enter your positions or even manage stops, Fibonacci is useful for that and Bollinger Bands can be done for targeting. So playing back for the upper Bollinger Band, um, for a target on a retracement trade, that's your exit. If price touches a Bollinger Band, that's your exit. There's a little caveat, and the caveat is that in big market trends, I mentioned it earlier, price can keep on going and push on to the Bollinger Band. So that's a strategy where price is triumphant to indicators. If you are trading these things, there are two ways to get into them, two ways to enter the pullback of the retracement period. If you're a new trader, I would highly suggest watching the example on the right. If you are a little bit more advanced or experienced or just aggressive, the left panel will be your metric to follow. And so what we're doing is if there is a trend, if there is a trend in motion, so volume trade higher, et cetera, and there is a pullback or retracement, we would look to enter at support as closely as possible. And that could be just price touching it. That's the touch rule. If price touches a rising average, touches a trend line, or if you're more advanced, touches one of those Fibonacci retracements, that's an automatic buy. And that's all there is to it. So that would be a very aggressive buy into support. The stop would just be under that level, and the target would be at least the minimum retrace, of, a minimum retest of the high, and actually a little bit above that. If you are conservative, and if you are a brand new trader, trust me, use conservative strategies. It's just a little bit better that way. Um, you can get more action. It feels better. It's more psychologically uh, easier on the emotions and those sort of things because price is doing something. 
price is not just touching a support level, but coming up off of it, rallying through it and breaking above it. So these are the examples of that. It can be a break of a trend line or the break of a reversal candle high. So those are two metrics. Break of a trend line as price goes through it or the next bar, which would be day or you know, whatever the case is, above that. Two more. Same thing, just kind of putting it in word format. Execute at the price, wait for a reversal candle or a trend line break. You can use limit orders, but go ahead and get in market orders if the price starts to move up off that level. You don't want to get left behind. So that's the thing. You can play into support. If you're aggressive, you're buying from the sellers as price trades lower, or as the price goes up off that level, not a great idea to play you know, limit orders and get this and because the markets can move quickly, especially in a trend. So we want to go ahead and get that trade on. It is typically better to use wider stops, a little bit larger stops. And we're just going to that a little bit shortly. But that's a little better than putting a stop right on a trend line because markets can tag that, trap, and then you're left with a losing position that otherwise would have done well. So for the most part, a little bit wider and I know that's hard to do for most traders, but wider tends to work a little bit better, especially in these trending environments. And trail or stop. Okay, now I can look at charts. Now I can look at pictures, finally. <laughs> All right, so this is a Google retracement going back just really to October 17. So this is Friday's session. There's your initial big, big, big volatile action. It's a five-minute chart, big breakdown, big range. We talked about that earlier how the candle, this one, two candles in a row on a five minute chart are huge, they're enormous. They're much bigger than any candle that have gone before. So that's your session for something is different, something is unique, something's out of the ordinary. If you're really aggressive, that was a trade, but I think this initial breakdown under this rising average, maybe a flag or what the case is, that's your trigger break about the 518.50 area Stop would be trailed, in this case, above the 50 because it's closer. That's your wider stop, right? Notice how it went inside the 2050 pocket or 2050 zone, tagged out some people there, and then went lower. So I prefer having stops. So if you can handle it, a little bit higher on these 50 EMA models. Same goes for daily charts or higher frame than just a five-minute chart. Initial trade, and when I talk about trend line breaks, so you, have this, you can draw a trend line here. The price went above it about 5.15. That's your exit. And price had a little tiny retracement and broke once again to these big impulse bars. So similar strategy on that, just trading the retracement, trading the break under two metrics, your rising trend line or the break under a reversal candle low. And the main thing I want you to think about with this presentation, the main point, the main goal, it's just simply that these trends can continue. We don't want to be fighting a trend. We don't want to fade or go against trends, even though that might feel uh, gratifying, good, logical, etc. Go back to the earlier part, which is this concept of the feedback loop. That's when one side of the market's dominant, the other side of the market is essentially losing money and stopping out, in this case the bulls, to the winning side, the bear. So we don't want to start saying, oh, look, there's reversal candles, uh, and I'm going to get long. That, that's you know, not the way the trends typically work. In fact, if you do that, you will be the ones helping this down movement with your stop losses. So October 3rd, this is the S&P, kind of a textbook trend day here. Big opening gap, breaking 195. Really not even a pullback, that's a one bar pullback and then it keeps going. The first trade is not the end of the open, it's the pullback, the retracement. If you're aggressive, you're tagging into this 20 EMA as close as possible. If you're conservative, you're tagging or tagging, trading into with a trigger above the trend line at all points in time uh, or a reversal candle. That's your parameter to enter. And in this case, I would trail a stop under the 20 and the midpoint of the 2050. If you're really, really, really aggressive, you can trail it under that 50. But see, the price never really came to the 50, and that's what a trend day is. That's what a trend session is or a trend movement for a swing trade is.
the price never goes under the 50 EMA. Therefore, it's a logical spot to trail your stop. If you put just under that 20 EMA, especially in this example, uh, midday, you got tagged out and the market went up and did its high and got the profit. So that's something we don't want to have happen is you would get the thesis right, we get the trade right, we get the retracement correct, yet our stop loss strategy sabotages us. For the most part, tighter stops will do that. Tighter stops are a little bit more uh, likely to get you out of a winning trade or uh, prevent a winning trade from happening. So just general market shakeouts and such. So the wider stops can help with that. Back to October 3rd. This is Netflix. We talked about Netflix earlier. Similar, this one did not even pull back. So a lot of traders at this point said, oh, some traders at least, Netflix is gapping up. I'm going to short sell it. I'm going to trade against it and put a short position on there. But their stops were triggered at higher and higher levels as the market did trade higher. And that created what we call a feedback loop. Feedback loop just being where both sides of the market are doing the exact same thing for very different reasons. Bulls are buying to make money. The news event or earnings or just the market uh, euphoria or whatever reason and the aggregate and the bigger picture calls them to buy and they're you know putting on positions. And sellers similarly are taking off their positions. They're losing money. The risk was uh, they failed to take that market down and so they have to take their stops or they risk losing a lot more money. So this is what drives a trend. We take advantage of that as traders on these slower frames or swing charts by buying retracements into this feedback loop. So we don't necessarily, or for that matter at all, jump into a market moving up. That's not what we do. We don't do that. We will wait for a pullback because pullbacks allow us to manage risk. That gives us a fixed target to play for. It gives us a fixed place to put a stop loss and trail it. And so we're not just kind of guessing and hoping and feeling good and feeling that the market will go up forever. We're being more risk controlled than that. With again, a strategy, a metric, and a process to do so. And these pullbacks are, are quite efficient in what they do. So two examples of pullback trades on an intraday basis if this were a hourly chart or a daily chart or even a weekly chart, the same logic would apply on these pullbacks, trend continuity, get in on the retracement, manage your risk, and et cetera. By the way, we're playing for the prior high or exiting when price breaks a rising trend line and does these reversal candles. And if the market forms a second buy signal, we just, just get back in and similar logic on that. So. Again, keeping it very, 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 very simple is the name of the game there. Okay, and so this is going to be October 1st. This is a Netflix just a couple of days before. This is a down move for Netflix. This is a bearish event. Big gap down. In fact, the gap was from uh, 451 to 449. Not really much of a fade or fill, and that's your sign. Maybe there was earnings, maybe there was news, maybe there was a catalyst in the market or Netflix or whatever, but nonetheless, when the market opened, it gapped down about four, five, six dollars on this. And then see the, those bars? This is all in the first hour. I want Pacific time here in Los Angeles, but this is all in the first hour or 30 minutes of the market opening. So these big range bars, and just for simplicity, I didn't show up, but volume was surging too and et cetera. But these big range bars and an opening gap were clues, especially those, one, two, three, four, three big, big, big down range bars that odds favored a trend continuity and the trend keeping going for Netflix. And that made us more likely to sell these positions. Same metric, if you are aggressive, you'll short into this falling 20 moving average. If you're conservative, on the break. These two entries didn't really get a target, but two entries in the same logic and finally pushes down to the lows and even generates a third opportunity. So that's their main idea, that the market opened with a big gap, big range bar, volume, volume expanded, volatility expanded, big range. We don't really get short into this collapse or this movement. We'll actually trade into retracements therein. 
and there were one, two, at least three, if not four, if not five, depending on how you quantify these things, to get into a falling market, a market that made its low right at the end of the session. So that's your key. It opens at one extreme, closes at or near the other, and we as traders can take advantage of that movement on pullbacks. That's the core of retracement trading strategies. So this is going forward a little bit for the S&P, and it's kind of the same logic, except this time, this is that trap scenario. This was after that Fed, after the kind of the, the break and movement up, and here's your initial gap down, not really a big gap. Well, actually, it was about 50 cents, 60 cents down. Did not really fill the gap. Um, not really, you know, kind of excited on the bullish side, but here's your support level at 195. The market breaks that. There's a breakdown trade. Not a retracement in this case, but a breakdown. An impulsive trade that sends short sellers excitedly buy, uh, short selling the market, and it sends those buy, the buyers or bulls into a state of frustration and confusion as they take their stop losses. The end result on the chart is a big down move. So your breakout trades are inherently more aggressive than retracement trades. I tend to prefer retracements, honestly, but it's just triggering into a break. It's just classic breakdown metrics. So it's a support level round number, multiple levels of support, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles here, and your break will trigger instantly into the breakdown, and your stop is also above your 50 EMA. Or if you're ambitious or aggressive, the prior high. And it's trailed down as the averages trail down, and your exit, this is a collapse scenario, exits on the break of the trend line and these reversal candles down here. Uh, if, you, if you did this one here, it was a little bit too much of an early exit, but that, that worked too. Either trades worked. Same thing, two different events to short sell into a market, and even though it looked like it was going to support and rally up of 192, which was logical, the next session was a continuity of the downtrend. So even though things looked rosy and support-based bullish, the market failed, the trend continued, and the next session was lower, pushed to a new low. So that's your key point. Trends tend to continue unless they fail. So don't get arrogant, don't get biased that if there's a trend day, it will continue. As traders, we have to be objective and we have to be always on our game following not our feelings, not our emotions, but objective process metrics and things we quantify and write down and make part of our trading plan. And this is it. So we'll continue to assume that a trend day, if it exists, if there's a gap and if there's big volatility and if there's big volume spikes, higher relative volume, we will expect a trend day to continue. We will therefore play retracements in that trend day until, until something like this happens, something goes wrong. We can quantify that too. If it is a uptrend day, you'll see initially a break under the 20. Keep in mind that powerful trend days will never go under the 20 EMA. I'll repeat, if it's a really, really powerful trend day, it won't go under the 20 EMA. We've seen those examples on the prior charts recently and then October. Uh, if it does, that's a warning. So maybe stop trading in that trend until it can get back above the 20. So don't try to trade retracements under the 20. We'll make it that kind of a rule. See if you see this arc trend line, or sometimes you see, especially in the lows of the session, V spike reversals, boom, boom, V spike patterns, which is a uh, kind of, it looks like a vacuum. It, it looks like a, the letter V, but it's a vacuum and it's a, a climactic collapse. We'll see that shortly. But, Either one, either one would suggest caution, especially if we break that 20 EMA. But if we break the 50, then it's all over. It's the trend line's done. The trend, the trend day is finished, finito, and we have a reversal confirmation. That's when we call the 50 EMA the line on the line in the sand. If price breaks this warning, if we see a pattern that looks like an arc or a V spike, uh, warning number two. If we're under that 50 EMA, then it's over. And in fact, I won't talk about it for the time of this presentation, but you can actually trade that for a reversal trade. So this is back to that Fed day, uh, the back to the um, 
on October 15 here. And so this is your initial gap, going back to the S&P. This is the same pattern that happened in multiple, let's spend minutes here, uh, same pattern that occurred in the uh, on multiple stocks and the indexes, just using this for simplicity. Big gap down. This is your collapse session. This is under this 187 and down to 184. The market literally collapsed on this session. Uh, traded back into, guess where, the falling 20 EMA, two times, and that was your first position. We don't walk up and get short on a down market, nor do we look to buy a market that is gapped down. We wait, remember that first hour? That first hour is important to note. And so this is your retracement down, two of them shorting into the falling 20 EMA or the break of the trend line or reversal candles. This was a fantastic trade. It doesn't happen all the time, but if it does, that can be wonderful. Then the market broke the 20. This is a failed flag. Broke the 20, whoops, not good, not something we want to see if we're bearish. And especially this, a stop was taken out here. Once it broke the 50, all bets are off. And you saw what happened next, which was a powerful impulse. It's the same logic. Those who got short into a trend, they're now having to turn the tables and uh, exit. And buyers are trading off this level. So that's what a failed trend day or reversal, or this is a V spike, violent spike. This next one is a, actually it's yesterday, October 17. This is back on the S&P. It's a rounded reversal. You can call it a V spike, but I think it's more rounded. It has more of an arc pattern. Your big gap up, your first retracement trade, this was so powerful, it never got back to that 20 EMA, but it did break these trend lines. So two entries, two retracements, two flags that entered and we exit on the break of the trend line, which is up here, and then down to the 189.50, and darn, the market broke the 20 EMA, broke the 50, and then it's over. It trades into resistance, breaks down, and collapses, and then eventually pulls back to the close. So we had a, this is your options expiration session, but nonetheless, this is the pattern to be simple, to be easy, not complicated, to provide core rules for recognizing and, and identifying trend days, but being on guard for number one, 20 EMA break, number two, 50 EMA break, and this V or arc pattern. Uh, don't buy these pullbacks, basically, and this is an example where the buyers close the market higher. So that's generally the thesis, that's generally the Q&A, and I, I, again, I, I can't see the uh, chat window there, so maybe if we can show me what to do on that, but it, the chat window is not really uh, updating is what's happening. So anyway, the summary is we need to observe that time sequence, and on the recording, or just email me for a copy of that, the slides, or that checklist, it's that five factor from the moment we wake up, Asia, overnight market, the first hour before the market opens, the actual open gap or not, and the first hour is that big candles, big volatility, big volume, big internals, etc. And then be a detective, which is put your sleuth hat on. Don't be biased. Don't be sorry. Don't look for things that aren't there. Let the market tell you. Assume the market will not be a trend day until it does. And same thing. Gap news, trend lines, flags, and then if assume the trend will continue until you see an objective break of that 50 EMA. And it's the same thing on the higher frames as well. Okay, well, thank you for your attention. I apologize for the chat. I like, again, again, I like to keep this more interactive, but I did not see the chat update in that window. So um, do you have any questions? If you have any questions at Corey at AfraidToTrade.com, maybe Reed can type in some questions if, if uh, that's possible uh, at the conclusion if there's time. Otherwise, blog that AfraidToTrade.com and you, if you wish to see more metrics on swing and really intraday tactics, you can do a whole month with me at this link here, premium.afraidthetrade.com, smart investing. So that'll be the kind of the metric to look at and see that we can type it in. Okay, yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> we have questions. I hate rambling for myself. Thank you, Reed. Didn't Apple break the 50 a second time before it rose, before the big slide a year ago? Did you work a daily chart? Well, let's take a look at that. As we see that Apple go back to the simple daily chart and frame there. Kind of loading here. And the other question, so this is buy now on Netflix after the earnings cliff. So let's let's take a look at, at Apple. So remember we talked about this from a trading standpoint intraday. Well this is the same logic, same metrics, same identification as 
on the daily chart. So this is going back to May 2014. There's your breakout. There's your impulse. If we saw volume, volume will be surging too. Big, big, big impulse of bars. We buy the first retracement. Same thing. Buy the second retracement. Third. This one gets us a little bit scared, but it came off of that 50 EMA. That's that trap scenario, right? Trap went down, tricked, and then up for multiple days in a row. This starts to get dicey, meaning it's going between this 2050 EMA structure. We don't want to really participate in that, and we see this break down. So at this point, unless Apple can go back above 100, it's starting to show the potential distribution um, and potential breakdown objectively. So Apple's not to be touched unless it's under 100. And that came out of a range breakout. So assume this is like an intraday chart. There's your initial thing, there's your break, and there's your multiple retracements in that trend. Um, okay, is Netflix a buy now? And let's take a look after that earnings spike, or after the earnings uh, fail. Goodness, um, same thing going back to this. Uh, so this is that concept of up move, volatility, retrace, retrace, not the perfect, but as it starts to break under these, it's big warning signs. You can't predict. Uh, technical analysis, that's why fundamentals are important. They can't predict a market gapping down, huge gap like this. That's not the goal of TA. It's the combination there and especially swing trading. So uh, back to this one, what's going on now? This would be a potential aggressive, 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 aggressive buy off of this support level, and it could start filling up this range. Think about an intraday chart that gaps down, and it tends to fill that gap even a little bit. Even if it doesn't fill the entire gap, maybe it fills a half of it. And so you can draw a Fibonacci grid on this, and the 38.2 the is under 400. The halfway point is about 410. So it's not out of the question to see Netflix pop back up, hit this level, and maybe trade lower uh, based on that retracement. But it may have overshot its sell, and by overshooting, I mean has gone down beneath value. People see it as value to get into it, and it may push back up. Same thing happens on an intraday chart. Um, yeah, Mark Cuban is he's buying Netflix stock right now. What now? So I would, I would imagine potentially a push back up, especially if it starts breaking out above 365. That would clue me in that we're probably trading back to the 400 level. So what other questions read on? And again, I hate that the questions. It, it's just the chart window never, the chat window never really updated. I didn't see the updates there. So other questions before we have time? Yeah. Okay. Well, excellent. Excellent. Thank you all so much. And this is the link for the free month trial full website access there. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your whole day of being with us here. And we'll turn back to Reed. Everybody be safe.